بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله العلي الواحد العالم الفرد الغني الماجد وأفضل الصلاة والتسليم على النبي المصطفى الكريم وآله وصحبه الأطهار لا سيما رفيقه في الغار وبعد My dear respected brothers and sisters This is a response to an individual who goes by the name of Sheikh Imran Hussein A very popular speaker who speaks regarding Islamic eschatology and the public also assume him and perceive him as an Islamic eschatologist. I want to make it very clear from the onset that the contention with Sheikh Imran Hussein uh, is not in subsidiary issues, nor is it in, in his entire eschatology, his uh, eschatological explanation. Rather, the contention with Sheikh Imran Hussein is one of fundamental uh, to do with creedal matters and which is uh, directly linked with the Quran. Quran, which is our first and foremost uh, basis for our deen, for our religion, for our aqidah, for our creed, and is a sine qua non of our belief system. Uh, recently, the certain videos have come onto the public domain uh, of Sheikh Imran Hussein where he is giving an interpretation of the Quran, uh, interpretation of certain verses uh, which, inter which entail interpolation and at times in fact uh, it necessitates uh, utter rejection of the Quran. For example his explanation or rather his rejection of the verse وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ لِلسَّاعَةِ Surah Zukhraf verse 61 which Shaykh Hassan Ali, may Allah reward him, has responded to. Inshallah in the descriptions we will put a link to the response of Shaykh Hassan Ali to Shaykh Imran Hussein where he has rejected this Qira'a وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ لِلسَّاعَةِ which is written in all of the manuscripts of the Quran that we have today and which is transmitted with Tawatur overwhelmingly uh, by all of the Qurra, the major Qurra. However, in today's response, I want to concentrate on a particular verse which Sheikh Imran Hussein misconstrues and he goes against uh, the mainstream interpretation of the Sahaba and the first three golden eras of Islam. Uh, but before I respond to his, uh, his clip or his video, I, w I would I would request the followers, especially the followers of uh, Sheikh Imran Hussein, uh, to please watch this clip that will be shown now, inshallah. This clip is approximately four minutes long, and the reason the entire clip will be shown, so nobody can accuse uh, me of misquoting him or quoting him out of context. And I will also humbly request the followers of Sheikh Imran Hussein to be objective and not to be a servile conformist of their sheikh or to uh, as sheikh uh, imran hussein himself says to uh, to critically critically think regarding what he's saying and how it contradicts uh, the quran so please uh, watch the following clip when they saw him die on the cross They were convinced he could not have been the Messiah. What they did not know was that Allah made it appear to them that he was crucified. What's the definition of crucifixion? It is that you should die by hanging on the cross. What? is the definition of death. Answer. The definition of death is that Allah should send the angel to take the soul and not return it. Is there anyone who differs with me? The definition of death is that Allah should take the soul 
and not return it. Can Allah take a soul and return it? Tell the schoolboy, go back and study the Quran. So then what did Allah do to make it appear? That he died. Let me warn you. And my language is sometimes very harsh because that's the only language some people can understand. Don't come with this nonsense because it is not only pathetic nonsense, it is absolutely sinful to say that Allah, when I billah min hadha, Allah calls someone else to take the appearance of Nabi Isa alayhi salam, and that innocent man, innocent because he never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. Wait for judgment day with that. Nonsense! Pathetic nonsense. It's not there in the Quran, it's in your imagination. That's why it is. And yet it took the world of Islam by storm. What a brainwash Ummah we are today. Well then what happened? Well then why don't you go to the Quran, let the Quran explain rather than go on fancy flights of imagination. You're going to tell Allah on Judgment Day you caused that man to assume the appearance of someone? And he who never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. That is an act of injustice. You attributing injustice to Allah? What foolishness. But where are the scholars who will correct this foolishness? That's why I have to be so forceful in my language. Allah took his soul. They thought he was dead. They took down the body. They put the body in the cave. They sealed the cave. Allah returned the soul. As simple as that. Nobody knew that the body, that the soul was returned. And Allah raised him. But let me warn you one more time. If you stick with this theory of substitution, you are going to be in a pathetic state on Judgment Day. Let me warn you one more time. This is a simple explanation from the Quran. And so, he did not die. So my dear brothers and sisters, you've all heard the clip. Uh, in this clip, Sheikh Imran Hussein makes several bold claims. And I want to categorically mention at this point is that this is not about which sect you belong to, whether you are Brelvi, Deobandi, Salafi. Regardless of your sect or your de denomination, this is to do with the deen. This is to do with the Quran, which all of the sects, they agree upon, they agree upon the Quran and the valid interpretation of the Quran. So Imran Hussein makes his main claim is regarding Isa alayhi salam, that Isa alayhi salam was hanged, na'udhu billah, on the cross but did not die. It appeared to the people that he died. And I quote him verbatim, when they saw him die on the cross, they were convinced he would have not been the Messiah. What they did not know was that Allah made it appear to them that he, Isa, meaning Isa al-Islam, was crucified. And then Imran Hussein, he asks, what's the definition of crucifixion? It is that you should die by hanging on the cross. So this is the definition he gives of crucifixion salb. And since Sheikh Imran Hussein likes to engage in critical thinking, I want to remind him that robust definitions, jami' mani, comprehensive and preventative definitions are normally based on jins qareeb and fasl qareeb. Jins qareeb, proximate genus and proximate differentia. This is in mantik logic as had tam. So I don't want to elaborate the logical, uh, logical terms here, but just to give a quick pre or summary of the discourse. So the genus here is killing. The genus here is killing. 
the differentiator is killing through hanging killing through hanging so there's many ways of dying and there's many ways of being killed but hang, uh, being hanged is a specific way to differentiate this is the fasl qareeb in this context the quran surah nisa allah says very clearly in unequivocal terms wama qataluhu they did not kill isa alayhi salam wama salabuhu nor did they crucify him the entire concept the entire definition with its uh, proximate genus and proximate differential has been negated by allah there was no salb there was no crucifixion there was no hanging nor was any killing nothing so this notion that sheikh imran hussein is forcefully postulating that he was hanged and then he did not die this goes against the quran because the quran is clearly refuting the entire concept of sal whether that is hanging and dying or whether that is hanging and then not dying because the entire definition the entire definition is to uh, to get hanged and then die the entire concept of the quran uh, the, sorry the concept of the quran is clear sal that wama sal wama salabuhu allah has negated the entire concept of salb which involves uh, which con uh, consists both of killing and, and and dying and then he asks what is the definition of death answer the definition of death is that allah should send the angel to take the soul and not return it is there anyone who differs with me he asks tell the school boy allah knows best who the interlocutor here is Tell the schoolboy, go back and study the Quran. So this definition that Allah takes the soul and then he does not return the soul or asking in a very rhetorical manner, can Allah return the soul? This, they both go against the Quran. I mean, I'm not going to use the same phraseology as Imran Hussein and call him a schoolboy, but I would humbly request that he studies the Quran once again and he studies basic aqidah basic aqidah anybody who has studied basic theology will know that allah can return the soul inna allaha ala kulli shay'in qadir indeed allah has power over everything that is rationally possible and amongst the rationally possible uh, the rational possibilities is the returning of the soul to the body in addition if death is only to take the soul and not return it at, at, at any point with generality then by this definition uh, nobody dies why because a person's soul is returned when they go into the grave as mentioned in a hadith and also on the day of judgment everybody will have their soul anyway this is not a major point here but i just wanted to highlight uh, his uh, inaccurate or shall i say uh, a definition which is not uh, jami and mani according to uh, logical terms then Imran Hussein, he says regarding the interpretation of the Quran, the famous interpretation of the Quran. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Nisa that the Jews did not kill Isa alayhi salam nor did they crucify him. What happened? وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ The matter was made ambiguous to them, to the Jews. It was made obscure to them. There are two main narrations regarding this. I will quickly, inshallah, give a synopsis of these two narrations there are several but main main two narrations one is that when isa ali salatu was salam's house and residence got surrounded um, an individual a jew went inside the house to kill the prophet of allah isa ali salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed his face into the appearance of isa ali salam therefore when he came out they all killed him instead so they killed the wrong person or the second interpretation is the Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he realized that he will be, uh, he, he is going to get attacked by the Jews, he asked his Hawariyin, Hawariyun, his followers, is there anybody ready to, uh, to sacrifice themselves, to take my place, and my appearance will be given to them momentarily, and they will be my Rafiq, they will be my companion in Jannah. So one of the followers volunteered, therefore they killed him, according to the second interpretation. Now this interpretation, which by the way, is established from the Sahaba, the likes of Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. You pick up all of the major tafasir, Ibn Kathir, Tabari, I have several books in front of me, I'm not going to go through all the tafasir. All of the major tafasir you pick up 
you will find these two interpretations. From the likes of Sayyiduna Ibn Abbas ta'ala regarding whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi specifically made dua for his understanding of the Quran. Allahumma faqihu fi deen. Oh Allah, give him the understanding of deen and wa'allimhu ta'wil and Allah, teach him. Oh Allah, teach him, Sayyiduna Ibn Abbas, the interpretation the explanation, the exegesis of the Quran. Therefore, arguably, Sayyidun Ibn Abbas is the most reputable and the greatest Mufassir exegete amongst the Sahaba. He is giving this interpretation. Imam Mujahid is giving this interpretation. You will find several copious narrations from the first three uh, eaters, uh, Khairul Qurun, who have given this interpretation. But unfortunately, and I have to say this with a very heavy heart, Imran Hussein very strongly and forcefully asserts that these explanations are pathetic, nonsense, and you, are, you will be sinful, astaghfirullah, and also this is fanciful imagination. Fanciful imagination. Why does he reject these interpretations? And I will quote. He says, well, then what happened? Well then, why don't you go to the Qur'an? Let the Qur'an explain rather than go on fancy flights of imagination. Meaning these tafasir, uh, which are established from the entire ummah, the imagination. You're going to tell Allah on judgment day, you cause that man to assume the appearance of someone. And he who never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. That's an act of injustice. You, you're attributing injustice to Allah. What foolishness! A'udhu Billah. Meaning, these interpretations, they entail injust injust injustice, volume, or oppression. Na'udhu Billah. Why, may I ask? If we take the first interpretation, namely when the Jew who goes inside the house of Isa alayhi salam with the intention of killing the Prophet of Allah. If his, in if his intention was to kill the Prophet of Allah and then he got killed in return, he deserved what he got. That's not injustice. And if we take the second interpretation where one of the followers of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam volunteered to give themselves, to sacrifice themselves in return of Jannah, then what difference is what difference is there between this and the stories of the Sahaba who were willing to give their life for Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? And then he said, this is foolishness, na'udhu billah. So the interpretation from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah on all of the major mufassirun who understood the Qur'an much better than you and I and much better than Sheikh Imran Hussein, who actually saw the Qur'an being revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidun Ibn Abbas heard the Qur'an from the Prophet alayhi wa sallam, heard the explanation of the Qur'an from Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And na'udhu billah, Imran Hussein saying, Imran Hussein is clearly saying this is foolishness. And then he says, and may I add respectfully, quite arrogantly, he says, that's why I have to be forceful in my language. And he says before this, where are the scholars who will correct this foolishness? Meaning 1400 years of scholarship, of uh, scholastic discussion regarding this verse, all of the uh, Sahaba, the Tabi'un and Taba Tabi'un who have given this interpretation, they did not correct this foolishness, rather they promoted this foolishness. And mashallah, in the 21st century, we have Sheikh Imran Hussein who is here to correct this foolishness. May Allah Ta'ala save us from such arrogance. And then he says, Allah took, this is, this is his alternative. This is the alternative which Imran Hussein is giving. Dear brothers and sisters, this is the alternative explanation which Imran Hussein is giving in contradistinction to the Sahaba and the Tabi'un. And by the way, he also asserts that this explanation is directly from the Quran. What does he say? He says, Allah took his soul, meaning the soul of Isa alayhi salam. They thought he was dead. They took down the body. They put the body in the cave. They sealed the cave. Allah returned the soul. As simple as that. This is his explanation. May I ask and I request and I plead to the audience of Imran Hussein that by Allah, please tell me where is this explanation in the Quran? Where are those words which postulate that the body was taken down? He, first he was hanged, then the body was taken down and then the soul was returned. He was put in a cave, the cave was sealed. Where is this? Never mind the Quran. This is not even inside the tafasir of the Quran, not even inside the explanation of the Quran. And the Quran clearly rejects وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ He was not crucified, meaning he was not hanged, nor did he die. 
This is the explanation. And he says, this is a simple explanation from the Quran. And so he did not die. This is the explanation that he is giving. And his explanation is not in the Quran. It actually contradicts the Quran and it contradicts 1400 years of scholarship. And the final point that I want to make is there's this notion that is becoming quite popular uh, on social media, especially in the comments of YouTube. Uh, people are saying, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, Sheikh Imran Hussein in Sheikh Imran Hussein is saying such things that no other scholar is saying. Allah, he is saying such things that no other scholar is saying. Allahu Akbar. This is, my dear brothers, this is necessarily not a good thing. This is actually a bad thing. If, he, if somebody is saying something that 1400 years of scholars are not saying, what does that mean? That means this person is a dodgy guy. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in hadith reported by Imam Muslim, Imam Muslim the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yakunu fi akhir zaman. The Jalun Kazabun, they need the end of times. This is part of eschatology. Near end of times there will be pathological liars. Yatunakum min al ahadith, bimalam tasma'u antum wala abakum. They will narrate such narration and ahadith that you haven't heard, nor have your forefathers heard. Stay away from them. Fa iyakum wa iyakum. La yudilunakum. Let them not misguide you. Let them not put you in fitna and trials. Oh, kama qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My request to Shaykh Imran Hussain and to his followers is do tawbah. Stop changing the Quran. And this is uh, one example. As I mentioned in the beginning, Shaykh Hassan Ali has also refuted uh, his, uh, his other uh, explanation, the, uh, his rejection rather of the Quran. And my final request is that eschatology is good, is part of our deen. But valid and sound eschatology is based on valid and sound Islamic epistemology. You cannot have eschatology without valid epistemology. You cannot have a valid, sound eschatological methodology without a valid, sound epistemological modus operandi. And this is where Imran Hussein is going wrong. He is asserting and postulating eschatological matters by refuting and rejecting the valid Islamic epistemology of 1400 years, which is dangerous and utterly nonsensical. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us death upon Iman and resurrect us all on the Day of Judgment with Iman. Wa akhru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi.